Okay, yeah. fine. You you want to do everything, and at the end of the day, you should be able to be good at most of the ones that mm. you're doing. But mm. I love what volleyball is actually trying to do. They know that their sport is a bit restricted and all that, so they want to do everything. Now, right now, it's the Snow Volleyball World Tour. It's going to be in Rio Negro. Mm. And you're like, uh, in Argentina, it's going to uh, start, uh, okay, August 1st to 4th. Mm. Uh, just uh, it's starting tomorrow, and it's ending on the 4th. So it's going to be a good one for Nigerian players. Because right. you're going to be having about uh, four players. They have Tuchuku, Noruga, Francisca, Ikide. Uh, she was at the All-African Games mm. in 2015. Right. Volleyball, a good medalist. She's also part of the squad. Isabella Langwa and Amara Uchechuku. Uche Chuku. Amara Uchechuku is the last for them. The coach is the guy in the middle. You have the four ladies there that will be participating. And the president of the federation talking about uh, Musa Nimrod. He's been talking about these uh, players saying that he believes this second edition that Nigeria will be participating in, uh, he would just expect it to be more popular, you know, mm. in the nation. And also, he believes the team, they have what it takes to actually have a huge impact in Argentina. We'll see what they'll be able to bring in because a few months ago, they were able to take part at the World Beach Volleyball Championships in Hamburg mm. in Germany. They made positive mark there. Maybe this one, they will just be able to make another positive mark when they get to Argentina. Fingers, fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. Fingers crossed. Uh, it might not be the most, most popular sport in yeah. Nigeria, but I like the fact that we're attempting uh, to do the sports. I mean, uh, did you ever think Nigeria was going to go to the Winter Olympics? No, I never uh, thought about did, that. They did qualify. Now we have so, snow. Uh, did you ever think yeah. Nigeria was going to uh, do, uh, what was it called? Curling. Curling. Yeah. No. It's even coming here right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. So, so I mean, wish, wish them, mm -hmm. Team Nigeria, all the best, all the best. Uh, in the snow volleyball uh, World Tour in Argentina. Let's move on from a sport that is not popular in Nigeria to a sport that is extremely <laughs> popular and arguably or arguably the second most popular sport uh, in the country, basketball. And we said at the start of the show that the maiden edition of the Basketball Africa League is coming to Lagos. Lagos has been selected as one of the seven host cities uh, for the uh, inaugural edition. Uh, and it is amazing. It is yeah, fantastic. It is. Uh, that Nigeria has been recognized as, as a superpower when it comes to basketball. I don't think there's any doubt about it. We know what the D Tigers have done on the continent, and mm -hmm. we know their prowess. Uh, so no surprises uh, to me at all. Like we said, seven cities. We're going to see uh, the other cities now, but Nigeria is definitely uh, a part of it. There's Nigeria there, Sicilia. Uh, there's Cairo, uh, Dakar, Dakar, of course. That's... A lot is happening yeah, basketball-wise right there. Right there. <laughs> uh, Luanda in Angola. Angola. Rabat, Morocco. Uh, then in Tunisia, still undecided whether it's going to be uh, Monaster, Monaster or Tunis. Uh, Lagos, Nigeria, definitely last uh, but not the least. As uh, so for the regular season, well, for the final four and the final, it's going to be in Kigali, Rwanda. Rwanda. You know, when I was looking, I was thinking that the final four and final yeah. is going to be Senegal. I don't know why I was thinking I mean, about yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, for, because that Senegal is where it is happening right, right, now. right now. But for whatever, they have decided on Kigali, Rwanda. Yeah, that's so, where they decided, and I know that's going to be a huge one. So starting March 2020, the six cities mm. will host that regular season, and they will be divided. You have uh, two conferences, two conferences right. and all six that. So each. 12 teams, six each, mm. two, and all playing in uh, three cities across. But so it's going to be huge. Exciting times. I mean, for the home-based home -based players, this is going to be huge. <laughs> They'll be playing and testing their, you know, their, their, yeah. their skill set against the best from across Africa. And... The two major outfitters for this particular game. Yeah, that's Nike that's and Jordan, and Jordan Brand. Brand. I mean, Amazing. Like, yeah. <laughs> is that, is that like These guys will be kitted by Nike and okay. Jordan Brand. Yeah, stop watching. They don't come bigger than this. that. Uh, it's big, it's huge. Uh, and I know Nigeria yeah. is going to come out tough. Yeah. If, okay. If just get it right. We need to go on a break now. We'll come back more on Sport this morning.
All right, welcome back from that break. We have a guest in the studio, Aaron the Baron. Okay, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron the I, I, Aaron the one? Okay. Do you want to just I can't want, say anything? Say okay. Anything. So let's just let's just move on down. Aaron uh, Kirijola. Yeah, 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 good morning. Yeah, good morning. So so they have yeah. decided to take us back yeah. to my radio days. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Aaron the Baron. I just said it. Yeah, he just said it. He just said it. He just said it. Oh, it's great to have you back. Yeah, it's good to be here. It's, it's been, been a minute. A, a lot has happened yes. since the last time you showed up yeah. and. Um, uh, exciting, of course, is the world of sports. Always exciting. Um, but this time, we want to talk about uh, the Nigerian Women's uh, Professional Football League. Absolutely. Uh, match day two finally kicked off last, mm. time, uh, last week. Uh, so that's good for the players. Uh, match day two, hopefully, uh, we'll get to see all the matches as well, too. And uh, we have the uh, result, uh, no, the result, the fixtures, fixtures um, <laughs> for today's matches, as well as some of the games that will be played uh, tomorrow. Of course, it's a new format. That was mm -hmm. explained to us by the media director, our uh, last time on the show. Uh, group A has got uh, FC Robo Queens uh, taking on Oshun Babes. That match will be played uh, today. And Cecilia is going to be there for that one. Delta Queens FC will take on Rivers Angels. That's going to be on Thursday. Yeah. Well, uh, in Group B, uh, we have Adamawa Queens uh, facing Dream Stars. Dream Stars lost the, you know, their debut yeah. match last That's week home. at yeah. home. Now they're traveling to Adamawa Queens. You wonder if. Uh, they they can't get, get anything. Any points. It's going to be uh, hard. It's going to be difficult for them. And Doe Queens uh, won away in Lagos against Dream Stars last week. Now they'll be home and a whole steam. Athland okay. Queens, and you think they, want, they have to consolidate. You don't, why do you go away? Why do you go away and win and come home and lose? Just consolidate, get or six draw, points. Or get a draw. They can't be insurance anyway. They can't be bender insurance. So I think they... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Group C, Cecilia. Cardinal Queens and Sunshine Queens will also be in action. Remember Cardinal Queens... We're actually well beaten, mm. you know, well, well ah. beaten <laughs> in their opening game. You have the likes of Rafia Suli, Joy Bukiri, all of them just ensuring that they got that uh, 3 0 well, they got mm. in the room. Oh. So, uh, another game against Sunshine Queens. Well, you never can tell. Maybe more. This is going to be a home game. Some coaches yeah, usually know comfort. how to win, you know, in front of their home fans and all mm. that. It should be one of those coaches. So, we'll see what will happen in this one. Nassau Amazons and Bayeso Queens, I talked about this one opening of the show. That's mm -hmm. going to be the big one. Everyone is looking forward to right. the league champions and also ITA Cup champion bouncing back from the fact that they were able to beat, you know, Rivers Angels and still on a high. They're still on a high. They haven't yeah. over celebrated. I um, forgot there's a match to be played <laughs> <laughs> this week. Invisible Angels don't know how invisible they will be at home against Confluence Queens yeah. that will come calling uh, today. Ebom Angels and Abia Angels, that's another mm -hmm. battle. They'll be in action also today. That's group D. All right. I love so, the way it's been structured. So it's going to be good for everyone. No long traveling and yeah. all that. So everyone just have opportunity to, you yeah. know. Okay, you, are, you are not around when uh, the media director came and explained. Give us reasons why they decided to go uh, with this format just for this season. Uh, next season, we'll see how it pans out. But Aaron, uh, let's, let's come to you on this one. I mean, <laughs> are you excited about the women's uh, professional football? League? I mean, it's match day two already. Are you like... Champion at the beat to go watch any of the games? Um, we are hoping things actually play out yeah. this season. And I hope the World Cup was a learning curve for the entire women football. Because right. it has shown that we might still claim to be the dominant team in Africa. Mm. It's showing that with what we saw with some other people, the Cameroonian team, mm. the South African team, mm. that people are catching up with us and they are playing even better football than yeah. us. Mm -hmm. And mm. now the question that begs to be answered is what, is what are we doing about it? Because at the end of the day, it's down to the grassroots. It right. starts from oh. leagues like this. Right. When this particular crop of players, which if you look at the Falcons, it was dominated mostly by people who play abroad. Right. They were playing at some point in Nigeria. They've all moved, most of them have moved abroad. Mm. If that particular generation faces out. Mm. Do we have people from the league that are good enough to represent us? And if there is any league that should be producing stars that will go straight into the national team, it should be the women's team. But things are not really panning out. We've seen things go on. Just like the male too, there, if, it, if there's no enticement for people who play the league to know that if I play well, if I actually dominate in my role, be it a defender, midfielder, a striker, or a goalkeeper, I have a shot at the national team, mm. a guaranteed shot 
what now happens. Mm. We're hoping it gets better. With yeah. it, it's a continuum. We're hoping yeah. it gets better. Mm -hmm. We're hoping it gets better. Rivers Angels have dominated. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy that things are beginning to change. Yeah. But whether you still like it or not, the mm -hmm. team to still be going into every season yes. remains Rivers Angels. Right. At a certain time, people claim that because the coach was the <laughs> national <laughs> team <laughs> coach, <laughs> he actually moved most of his players to <laughs> the <laughs> national <laughs> team. But let's see if anybody can. If mm. anybody, if they can begin to match the standard that Rivers Angels has set, mm -hmm. I can tell you then, we'll have a league that is worth watching and worth marketing heavily. Right. Second, yeah. That second point so important, yeah. marketing. Uh, we know the issues with funding. Uh, they've been going uh, all out uh, yeah, to, to try and see if they can get you know, sponsors, sponsors that can help all. this league grow because you can't grow the league uh, without uh, serious uh, funding. So uh, that's on the administrators uh, to sort out. So that's it for... Now the Nigerian Women's Professional League for today. When we come back tomorrow, we'll be doing a review of all the matches that went down today. We're not leaving women's football just yet, Cecilia. We're going to the USA now, though. Yeah, I mean, I mean, when when most of us uh, saw the story late last night, we we're like, okay, what's really happening? G. Ellis, she will be stepping down as the USA national team coach. Wow. And you're asking yourself, okay, after back-to-back -back victory, becoming the first since. I remember the last time you have a coach actually winning the Women's World Cup back-to-back. Back back. Back. Yeah. So she was able to do it with the USA national team. Mm -hmm. Just maybe the pressure and all that. Remember when she started so early? Yeah. I mean, she had some criticism and all that. When it crashed the quarterfinals at the tournament and everything, everyone was talking about. I mean, what's she going to bring? They didn't win a medal at the Olympics. At, all, at the Olympics. The I mean, one. USA, and you're mm -hmm. asking yourself, this is the US national team. But right now, she was able to win the World Cup. In 2015 and 2019, again, she retained it and she decided, okay, mm. it's fine. It's time for me to really, you know, step down and the, allow the, someone the thing, to come in. The thing about, she took over. <laughs> yeah, the thing about um, people like this, Americans mm -hmm. and all these foreign guys is they know when to quit uh, yeah. at the right time. When yeah, the is, is loud. They, yeah, they're <laughs> not going to stay on a job forever like we do here. I mean, she's won everything that you can, you know, imagine. Mm -hmm. Uh, as an hour, we're seeing pictures of their uh, boss parade, open tour, open boss parade after winning the World Cup uh, in New York. Uh, and yeah, but for so she, she's come out to say, I actually envisioned that after so 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 and so yeah. time, yeah. I'm gonna go. And she's stuck by oh, it. Right. Yeah. No, the truth is, um, for coaches, the big question you always ask yourself is, where you've achieved so much and so are you hit the bar so high? Yeah. How do you motivate yourself? Mm. How do you motivate the coaches? What is the next big thing for you? you always, because some coaches always look for the next challenge. challenge. Some coaches right. always look for the next big thing. True. While some other coaches are probably the okay one, with staying. The safe, yes. zone. But mm. whether, you, whether, you like mm. it, whether you like it or not, the U.S. national team has gone through a cycle and an evolution. Yeah. Some players will not be returning to this team mm. by the next World Cup, without a doubt. So mm. there will be a hoover all in. But... Whether you like it or not, U.S., they've invested so much in the women's game. Right. As they claim, half of the youth players in female football are yeah. in the USA. Mm -hmm. so, so when you look at it, so when you know that, that they will always produce stars Fast. time and time again because of right. their college system, yep. because of their investment in sport, because of some policies that have said that women must participate in sports, and football seems to be the only game that can accommodate as many women as possible. Mm. So since they decided to go through that route, it has actually benefited them, oh, and they will still dominate again. Mm. And since they have good players, without a doubt, they've always had good coaches, mm. and they will still have coaches to actually move on. Easy. But you must yeah. congratulate what she's done. Right. Uh, it's yeah. not easy, especially, like you said, being a woman and winning it back-to-back. -back. That's, that's it's major. Difficult. Eight titles in all since yeah. she came on Eight. in 28. Yes. I mean, 2014, that's when she came in right. and all that. Apart from what happened at the Olympics and all, Really like yeah, intense the bleep, yeah. bleep the there same, and every, yeah. the criticism and all that yeah. overhauling players, bringing in about 16 new players she was able to bring in. So she came in also building a team for the future. Mm. I mean, that's how you live, and she's living right now. You're like, Fantastic who legacy. are they going to go for? Solid legacy she's living behind. Yeah, solid uh, one. And title, uh, new team, yeah. fresh legs, and everything and in the future. And whoever, whoever is coming we have something. next, exactly, something to work with. I, I don't know. And also, how they do have big shoes to fill. Because it will be expected that the U.S. national team not only just what gets to the World Cup, um, not just gets to the semifinals, but also right. gets to the finals mm. and maybe, hopefully, win not it. Maybe. So the pressure. Win it. Mm. No, you can't always win. You can't always, you can always win, win. But you can at least expect them to get to the finals. They're yeah. the most dominant team. Yeah. It's. 
by statistics, <laughs> it's not by luck they are where they are. Yeah, like we said, not. they've invested years Deliberate, and years. Yeah. If mm -hmm. half of the female youth players in the world are in yeah, USA, it says <laughs> something. Right. It's a whole lot because That's... I'm looking at the Olympics right now. 2020 is just next year. No, yes. that there is no coach, but there's a team already. So I think uh, just maybe. I, I don't think it's, it's going to be a problem. <laughs> she's still she's going to step down in early uh, October. So mm -hmm. That's enough time for uh, the USA administrators to, to start to looking for a right replacement. I was just hoping what? she would have extended her option after yeah. the Olympics that she stepped down, but she just decided. There's no, there's no right no, time. This, this is the best the right time. time. <laughs> if you would ask me. Talking about okay, looking yeah. for a challenge, right? Okay. Also, Someone Nigeria. Nigeria, can Nigeria still <laughs> sniff around <laughs> Jesus Ellis? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Uh, I'm, I'm from, uh, from what I heard, um, yeah. Thomas Denoby has a very extensive and a very mm. very ironclad contract trust mm. me mm. we'd have to pay through our noses wow. if we were to get Thomas then be out and okay. bring someone like that in yeah. but, but we have a coach we shouldn't be thinking of uh, why not, wait, truth, why not? It, a lot it. of people ask questions about the coach mm. and the ability and his technical ability just like how people question Genetra. The difference question. between him and Genetra is that Genetra, for some particular reason, you might question his technical or his tactical ilk, mm -hmm. but you cannot take away the fact that statistically, he's one of the most successful coaches we've seen in a very long time, be it absolutely. qualifiers or in the tournament. Wait, wait, wait. One, okay. Yeah, that, that, absolutely. Statistically, you know what? We'll, yes, you know what? Win we're going to we'll, 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 win rates. Is win rates so are win? phenomenal. The non, as who, re of the who remembers game? stats? <laughs> I mean, who remembers that? What okay. do you remember at the end of the game? Is it the possession you remember? Or the but these statistics are the reason why. Hold on. What do you remember? The titles? And the wins. And the, the wins. The wins and the, wins and the losses. Like, well, now, which be, is now remember that before this man which came is more on, important? we had Miss Two Nations Cup. Mm. And all of a sudden, we are qualifying we for the World Cup without, without even getting an eyelash. Before we, win, before we actually missed out two. Yeah. We want it. Cecilia, uh, how, yes, how, how has um, okay, talk, uh, talk about this Ellis <laughs> turned into a Precisely. talk about general? That's your fault. I, no, no, not my fault. He brought it in. I mean, he brought it in. You <laughs> actually, you started oh, yes, it. You yeah, wanted G. Ellis to coach exactly Nigeria. I'm like, we still have a coach. So, so no, he brought in Gennon Raw. He was trying to compare both. Let's talk about what happens, but it's actually a passion. I don't think, I don't think the Federation, with their constant cry for money, I don't think they can even afford that. First of all. One of these philanthropists can just say, Okay, you know, Jill Ellis, come to Nigeria, we'll put your bill, everything, whatever you want, we'll give it to you. I mean, we'll send it with you don't need, if, the, if, the, if they can spend that amount of money, mm. then the right place to actually spend that amount of money is in the league. Get it. Let's see. Is in the league, not on the coach. Okay, now, let's, let's talk about another coach. I mean, we want new challenge, right? Yes. I mean, new challenge. I thought you were going to go here when you talked about the new no, challenge and everything. Yeah.